Hi everyone, I am Matt Hetherington from mhtabletennis.com and today is day 9 of my first 30 day block of coaching tutorial videos for table tennis and so we're almost a third of the way there. Uh, we've covered a few different ranges of topics and today's going to be no different. Today I want to focus a little bit more on how you can start building some more power into your forehand against backspin and you know there's a lot of different mechanics for different strokes so I didn't want to spread it too much so I decided just to focus on forehand for now um, so I'm going to go a little bit over the adaptations to your me mechanics that you have to make to generate more power in your forehand against backspin so this is very common for players who are trying to press for the more third ball attack the serve and then the powerful forehand against backspin um, and I'll give a few demonstrations of that and also I have some slight you know useful exercises that you can practice um, which people don't commonly practice against which just have the main focus of increasing power uh, improving the synergy and the uh, effectiveness of your weight transfer and um, how you can keep practicing and repeating the use of more body in the stroke and uh, get that muscle memory helping you out for these situations. What we really need to look at when we're breaking down the range of different motions in a forehand loop, and I explained briefly about this in the uh, tutorial video that I made for just the foundations of opening the first ball against backspin, is that we're using a lot of body weight that comes from the toe and from the ground and the ground is the support force against this powerful spring through the legs and that all comes up through the legs and the quads the hamstrings the glutes everything is working together through your hip and waist engages all of this explosive power through your core and then through your arm swing now there are two main different extremes that we can take and then a whole range of uh, variables that we can change in between mainly to do with the angles of the swing and also how we choose to distribute that weight transfer so the opposite example that i'm going to take here is to explain how you would turn all of that body weight into spin and this is more common for the fifth ball attack where we're opening spin control first and then trying to follow up afterwards against topspin and that focuses on having a more open racket face and we use very much vertical spring through the legs so we're really pushing to get up through the back of the ball and generate the friction on the back of the ball okay so more open more vertical racket swing and we're really pushing up through the legs there's not as much core rotation because of the more vertical orientation. It's a little bit of core rotation, but mainly upwards force from the legs. When we're doing the third ball attack, or when we're looking to increase the amount of power, we're not looking so much to turn this weight transfer into spin or into friction on the racket like that. Instead, we're gonna utilize more forward momentum. So a lot of the time when we're playing with more power, this foot can come back more because if this foot is back more, when we push the body weight, we have more chance to push this body weight from the knee towards the ball. So that creates more forward momentum. The next thing that we want to look at, apart from having this leg backwards, is how we prepare our racket. So again, we need to drop our racket. Um, because we need to create some top spin in the stroke to get the ball over the net and have margins of safety but for this one we can bring the racket more backwards so instead of dropping the racket more down behind the knee we can draw the racket backwards with our core okay so when you're bringing your racket backwards you can twist your core to bring the racket back and as you bend your knee the racket comes down as well okay whereas if it's against backspin a lot of the time it's easier to just let your racket drop to prepare for a more vertical swing. So the important thing for this stroke is that we're trying to be a little bit more direct in the contact, the swing is more forward, the angle is more closed, 
and we're trying to create more power and not as much of a gripping friction on the ball, but more of a forward force that goes into the ball and creates that powerful third ball. So to do that, we bring the body weight back onto this leg, which is slightly more back than normal. And we're gonna push towards where we're lining the ball up, which is a little outside and in front of this knee. If you wanna get more power, it's good to have some extra space between your body and your elbow so that we can build up the swing a little bit more. If you're squished in here or you're playing through your arm here and you don't have this uh, extension, it can be hard to generate more power. And we're gonna push forward into the ball, really pushing through the hip, but then using all of that force and just turning it into explosive core rotation and your swing follow through uh, very much more forward than uh, when you're opting for more topspin. And you should be able to generate a lot of power in that stroke. Now it's important that all of these mechanics work together. You can't have a wild swing. You can't be uh, trying to hit at the ball too much with your arm. Everything has to work together in order to get the most efficient technique and in order to transfer the most weight through this stroke and into the ball. Aside from building power from the legs and the core as part of the stroke, we also need to think about our grip and how we react with our hand or with our arm at the contact point. So once you've built up all of the swing, there is some tightening through the thumb and fingers and also a little bit of snap through the wrist that goes in the same direction as your swing to add that last little bit of acceleration to the ball. So if you can combine body weight from the ground, a strong push from a little more back into the ball through the legs, a powerful rotation of the core, and then some final acceleration through the hands, you should be able to start producing more power against backspin with your forehand. The best way to start practicing this so that you can break the technique down initially is through either a robot or multi-ball, backspin multi-ball. And um, you can just examine one stroke at a time. So there's a lot of opportunity to focus just on that shot without the distraction of continuing the rally or returning serves, uh, this kind of thing. Here's an example of me playing with Lily Yip. Um, and just focusing on that one backspin ball from multi-ball. So in the beginning, I said that I had a couple of exercises that would help you increase the amount of power that you can put on the ball. And I learned about these in Austria back in 2013 when I was at the Werner Schlager Academy and a very experienced Chinese coach by the name of Li Xiaodong, um, who was one of the Chinese national team coaches, part of the Chinese national coaching team, um, and now on many occasions works with development programs with the ITTF, gave us some very interesting multi-ball drills to try and develop power. And they're drills that I've used with young players with a smaller um, physical stature um, or ones that have trouble building power in their strokes. I have used these on occasion before. And I have examples of both of them, and it's from multi-ball. Basically, the first one is an underspin feed, but 
the ball is significantly slower and higher and it's usually around chest height is a good way to feed it and if you can get the ball at chest height you really it's a situation where you have to generate all of the power on the ball yourself okay when somebody's feeding backspin and it's quite heavy although it's heavy rotation there's still speed on the ball that you can use to build into your stroke with these slower feeds and this first one is against backspin so there's a little bit of backspin rotation um, to keep you honest okay you can't play a little bit soft or a little bit wrong because there is some backspin on the ball this situation where the ball is slow puts all of the responsibility for generating the power in your stroke on you you have to generate 100 percent of the power almost using your own body mechanics okay and it's a good opportunity also to practice looping with power against a higher ball instead of flat hitting the ball and particularly with this backspin ball players do make errors when they're playing flat against the ball that has some backspin rotation on it even when it's high they make these errors so this is about increasing looping power against that higher backspin ball <laughs> example is kind of similar and instead of feeding a backspin ball you're going to feed a slow slightly higher topspin ball and again this has this the, the, the difficulty here with this one is that it has varying levels of height depending on how much the ball kicks and so in this occasion while you're generating all of the power in your stroke you also have to start making adjustments for the ball maybe kicking up or towards you or dipping a little bit and making adjustments so that you can keep on playing with that forehand power at the same time while you are and making those small adjustments to where the ball is going to be or maybe the sometimes the higher ball can be really hard and players just have a tendency to try and drive through the ball more um, but this is a good opportunity to make adjustments on the higher ball and start engaging especially against topspin more from your core okay so in these situations we'll keep the racket a little bit higher and drive drive forward through the ball contact really engaging the core yeah. <clears throat> tutorials I hope that you guys get something useful out of it um, I hope it's been explained in a way that makes sense to you and that you can take something useful away from it and uh, help you improve your strokes if you have any questions or if there's anything that you need clarifications about you can always reach me in the comments or in my email mhtablehouse at gmail.com thank you for joining me guys and I'll be back with another video tomorrow <laughs>